Out of a gun. These dudes are the pill bugs. How much is that? How much you got? Get the dude into coke, and I will point him out. I will run my finger right down his throat and out his ear. Who's Bingo? Says he's got some information on a motorcycle nut. Easy, right? Now empty the pockets. Hold it! If he so much as makes a move, I want you to waste him. See the look he gave me. Okay for him to be late. Look at the time. He had breakfast with the chief. He's probably been working all morning. Yeah, sure. <coughs> well, James, can I help you? A peeping Tom? Well, this is robbery, ma'am. You won't advise. That is, unless he took something from you. Okay, I'll transfer you. Why don't you go home, Lou? You're gonna infect everybody. <coughs> in a prescription for me. The name? J.D. Maynard. Yes, sir. Here we are. Uh, how much is that? How much you got? By the way, if you were worrying about me, I wasn't late this morning. I was having breakfast with Captain Kinsella, trying to get some help from Metro for a couple of guys who can't walk around in broad daylight without getting lost. Uh, summary on the drugstore, 211s. From upstairs, 13 now, count them, huh? 13? After they uh, tied up Mr. Maynard here, they loaded up all the drugs they could carry and left. Mostly reds and bennies in the big jars, right? You seem to know a lot about it. Just there, I'm on how they operate. This is the 14th drugstore around town. 14? Mm -hmm. In six weeks. 14 robberies in six weeks? Why can't you stop them? That's a good question. It just might be that since these characters don't wear masks, that they have very forgettable faces. These nice people they've been robbing have very poor memories. Would you, uh, gentlemen, take a look at... <coughs> Take a look at those and see if you recognize anybody. I think I have something that can help that cold officer. I hope it's strychnine. I'd like to do business with you, Bingo. We can try. Okay, we'll come get you. Take it like ten. Who's Bingo? It's a friendly. I haven't seen him in a while. Says he's got some information on our motorcycle now. The saloon 211s. Easy rider. Everybody gets the bar. I said everybody. Move! Okay, 
We empty the pockets. All the pockets. Ladies, put your purses on the bar. Hold it. Get back there. Don't be foolish. You. Empty the cash register. All times, I've been going. Hey, take it easy, man. I'm weak, huh? <laughs> Gotta make it look right, just. Where's Tony? Taking a long, well-deserved vacation. Lucky Tony. Think of why you're doing us this big favor. Well, I figured maybe you could work me a pass, huh? The next time something goes bump in the night. Hey, Bingo, you can do better than that. Okay, I don't like the dude. His lousy, shiny, hopped-up motorcycle, everything about him. Man, this one is sick. I mean, real sick. And I want to burn him. I mean, some fox takes me up to his pad, and I'm telling you, he's got no right to me out. Now, oh, come on. I'll get back with it. All right, look, like I said, we're going to shoot up, all of us, see? It's his pad. He's supplying the dope. Wait, wait, I forgot. I forgot. There we are. We're all sitting around, lying around. And in the middle of the room, up in this kind of like, like a stand thing, he's got this gleaming blue and yellow chopper. What kind? He ain't a bite nut, man. I don't know what kind, but it's a beautiful machine, and I mean beautiful. Okay, okay, so he keeps his bike in his front room. Why are you so sure that this is our man? Because pasted on the wall, in the front room, the same room where he's got that bike, he's got newspaper clippings, man. All of them, lots of them, of every saloon robbery pulled by the guy that the papers are calling the motorcycle bandit. Bingo, buddy. Give me the address of that gentleman's pad. <laughs> Stay friendly, Bingo. We'll be in touch. What do you think? 3W56, 3W56, see the officer at 211 at Delaney Saloon, 6 in Kenmore, code 2. 3W56, Roger. Roll him, fella. Roll. He's seeing this navy blue cap kind of pulled over his face. And he came in by himself. Tommy, how are you? You're looking great, man. Can you still go to the right and make that long throw to first? I didn't this time, did I? What, what happened? They cleaned you, Tommy, and your customers, too. That's bad. It gives the joint a black eye. He went roaring off on a motorcycle. Where were you? I was home watching the Redskin and the Dallas game. Well, you still got a little money left then, haven't you? Hey, look, will you please nab this guy? I mean, you know, business isn't as good as it was. We're gonna try, Tommy. We're gonna try real hard. All right, do that, will you? <laughs> wait, 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 now, what are you doing? You're going home, old buddy. Now get out quietly and get in your car. No, 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 wait, 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 first. You know, the pills, the pills are starting to work fine. The office is that. You're going home, old buddy. <laughs> Win yourself a couple of stiff drinks. Cover yourself with something nice and warm. Wait, my wife is not at home. There's no ball games on. I'm gonna go crazy. What am I gonna do? Get going, will you, Lou? <laughs> I'll get the reports written up. You're gonna give me pneumonia if you haven't already. All right, all right, all right. But just if you need me, <coughs> you get out Don't of here. Don't hesitate to call, right? Eh? Get out of here. Will your watch stop? No, I'll just come in some time. Pick it up a date at Mercy Hospital. Nurse or patient? Intern. Lady intern. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we got to have those now, too, huh? Where's Lou? He knocked off early. Lou? Yeah, he has a cold. I know he has a cold, but what's that got to do with him knocking off early? I talked him into it. <laughs> he must be pretty sick, sick huh? Well, where he gets that energy? Beats me. Enough for ten men. Yeah, I was talking to Lewis about it. Lois? The lady intern. Oh. She says it's probably his glands. Glands, huh? Hey, it could be. Oh, uh, a bird about the, uh, the easy ride of surveillance. Sorry, I can't afford another team. Now, Kovac and Samuel will have to handle it by themselves. Oh, uh, that was good work on that snitch. Hope it pays off. Night. Night, Lieutenant. 
Good night. Hey, Bert, do me a favor. I'll try to. Now, look at the two of us here late, right? Right. You see, my problem is that I'm essentially a night person. I mean, it's not that I want to be late in the morning. I just can't get going that early. So? So I thought you'd talk to the other guys and get them to lay off me. I mean, if they understand my problem is medical. Medical? Well, it's got something to do with my metabolism. Well, that's medical, isn't it? Oh, Joe. Maybe this will help. The lieutenant just left. He's putting you and Samuels on the easy rider surveillance tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I bet. Here, first thing in the morning. He wants to lay it on you himself. Bert and I told you to stay home today. All right, oh, come on, will you? All right already, enough. Who's the wise guy who fixed my wife? All right, will you shut up, will you? Stanton Avenue opening up another place. Oh, that makes number three now, right? Yeah, first of the year will be four. <laughs> oh, go on with your bad self. Yeah, I'm just working behind the counter because the chick that I hired you up and quit last night, huh? Change. Uh, listen, you know, I know I asked you this before, but, uh, are you interested in working for me? I don't know, but I'll think about it. <laughs> you do that. Let me know what you say, all right? Mm-hmm, I sure will. Huh? What do you want from me? Well, some guys tell me on stakes they see real interesting things, you know, muggings, purse snatchers, dames undressing in windows, you know. Hey, here he comes. What do you make of that? Beats me. At least we saw him. We know he's in there. Big deal. And the dude that was standing by the door had on a brown leather jacket, blue shirt, white pants, and brown shoes. Anything else? Yeah, he had a button missing off his jacket. And who found you, Mr. Gibson? Josh there. And I still wouldn't have been found if he hadn't been sneaking off in the storeroom to take a nip of that, that, that cough medicine of his. And don't you think I don't know about that either, Tom? Mr. Gibson. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll get somebody down here to see if they can lift some fingerprints. This might help. Mm -hmm. And then what? We'll be back in touch with you just as soon as we can. Oh, oh. Don't you give me none of that be in touch, Jack. This ain't some funky Central Avenue cat that you could kiss off with that same old bull. This is Dewey Gibson, and I got connections downtown. 
And I want you to know, I did not work my butt off for the past 20 years to let anybody come in here and just rip me off and get away with stuff like that. Find them turkey. Do the best we can. Cats ain't doing nothing but jiving me. You shucking and jiving, do we, do we get Mr. Gibson, you have already looked at some pictures. You're more than welcome to, when you have time to come down to the station and go through the entire mud pile. When? When? <coughs> when you have time. Now you mean when I got time? I got time right now. <laughs> The pill bugs running loose. Thirteen drug stores in a row. They must have grabbed enough pills to open up a chain of their own. Plus the saloon job, this motorcycle nuts been pulling off. You guys gotta get out there. You gotta help me. Uh-uh. Easy Rider belongs to Samuels and Kovac. You signed them last night. Surveillance on that lead we got, remember? Kovac. You know, if this bike bandit should call in and make an appointment to get himself arrested, Kovac would show up late. All right. Let him surveil. But Easy Ride is still part of your caseload. Thanks, Al. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hey, this is him. This is the cat who said he was going to blow my head off. This is the turkey right here. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> pull his pocket. Let's see, we haven't got a couple of addresses for him. And even if I had something to say, I couldn't say nothing. Because I don't know nothing. I'll allow you here. You have any second thoughts about him, Mr. Gibson? Picked him out of the lineup for you, didn't I? We just want to be sure that you're sure. Look, it's one thing to identify a suspect from a picture through a window in a lineup, but it's something else to point him out in the courtroom. Some people get uptight, uh, start to waffle, you know, say maybe it's him, it might be him. See, you, you cats think I'm going to turn chicken. I mean, is that what you think, huh? Mr. Gibson, as of right now, you are the only witness that's going to be at Evans preliminary. You might be the only one at his trial. L lighten up, Jack. This is Dewey Gibson. I mean, that legal, legal stuff don't scare me none. This Turkey Evans don't scare me none. And you cats don't scare me none. I mean, I've been out here on the street since I was 10 years old doing everything from shining shoes to running numbers. I didn't get to be where I'm at or as clean as I am by being scared. Get the dude into coat, and I will point him out. I will run my finger right down his throat and out his ear. 
If that's what you want. You have to. Hello, buddy. I think we've got a real witness. <coughs> Nobody's home. Oh, I'm on call. Oh. Why well, do you want to be a doctor? Why don't you get a job with regular hours? You're always on call. Come on. Come on. Hello. Bert? Hello. What are you doing calling me this time of night? I just got a call from Dutch Reinhardt at Wilshire. He just busted Dewey Gibson. Gibson? What for? ADW. I'll meet you there. Thank heavens it wasn't for me. Uh, is anything wrong? Well, uh, it's like this. You really blew it, you know that. Say, look here, champ. If you came home and found some turkey messing with your old lady, what you gonna do? Don't ask him. He's never home. All right. Dewey, was the gun that you had registered? Hey, look, Jack, this is good doing Dewey Gibson. Of course it was registered. I believe in doing things righteous. Right? Like chasing some guy out of your apartment for six blocks down the street, shooting a gun at him? Nobody messes with Dewey Gibson's old lady, man. Nobody messes. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go home, man. What's so funny? No, nothing. Evans preliminary is tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And our only witness is here, charged. Assault with deadly weapon, Dewey Gibson. Yeah, it's very funny, ha huh? you, you, you better be glad I didn't catch up with the turkey. It's like Gibson says. He was just trying to, to defend his wife's honor. Now, you can't be too rough on a guy for that. Once, no. Twice, maybe not. But three times in 18 months? Uh-uh. Especially when his wife doesn't want her honor defended. Gibson's gonna kill some upstanding civilian one of these days. What do you mean? He was shooting the gun in the air. He was just trying to scare the guy, that's all. What he always says. All right. Dutch, Harry Evans is going to be back out in the street. If Gibson is not in court at 2 tomorrow, happy and willing to ID him. So, how many drugs do a 211 as you have this division, Dutch? Six. You can get some static, huh? So have we. What's this got to do with Gibson? Hmm, nothing, probably. Except. You ever notice how Evans kind of fits the description of that pill bug that uh, handles the front of the stores? The description we've got could fit a million guys. And why would Evans suddenly switch M.O.s and take down some cleaners for a few hundred in cash and jewelry? Don't make sense. Right. Except I was just wondering if it's coincidence that not one drugstore's been hit since we nabbed him. Hmm. You know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens when Evans is back in circulation. If the brass ever found out we had the front man of that outfit and let him go, <laughs> well... Thanks anyway, Dutch. Uh, look, I've got to book Gibson for something. Uh, how about a citizen's arrest for discharging a firearm within city limits? I'll buy that. Thanks, Dutch. <laughs> Thank you, Dutch. Why didn't you tell me? What? Your hunch about Evans, that he might be one of these, uh, pill books. Didn't have it, so we had to come up with something to the spring old Dewey. Well, don't blame me. You told me the guy yesterday was a friend of yours. Hey, look, just because the cat happens to be a friend of mine don't mean that he's got to be a friend of yours. When will you be home? Well, has you got plans or something? Ooh, honey. Don't be doing me. I will be back when I get back. If I come back. You know Where you're supposed to be and where you're going to be is two different places.
had a gun. And it was aimed at Dewey's back. They went across to the parking lot. To a car and, and the, the one with the gun in his hand. He shoved Dewey into the back seat. What kind of car was it? It was old, maybe four or five years old. Black Cadillac, I think. Can you describe the men? Late twenties. I don't know if they were black. Kidnapped? First you ease him on the gun charge, now you tell me he's kidnapped? That's right. Could you move for a continuance, like maybe a week? Oh, sure I could. You know the judge we're up against, don't you? No, who? Bruce. Judge Elmer G. Bruce. Oh, me. Let him loose Bruce. What do you mean? What's, what's his story? Well, he'd like to empty the jails of most of the poor suffering cons and stick a few cops in their place. Lovely guy. Okay, we know the odds. Let me give the judge a try. Ah, boy. If our witness is still alive, a week could do it. Here I'm sitting in the same stool, and in comes this guy. He came in the front door. Now, he was a big guy, but he was wearing this woolen stocking cap, so you, you couldn't see his face. First thing you know, uh, boom! And look up, he's got this big gun, and he's, he's blown a bullet right through the ceiling. Everybody up the bar! It's him, again. Now empty the pockets. Ladies, first is on the bar. He's alive. He's just got to be. Hey, thanks again. The DA's office. We've got a week's continuance on Dewey. You mean old Let Him Lose Bruce joined our side? He's trying. Jameson, robbery. Oh, no. Delaney's. Would you believe Easy Rider? No, 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 not again. Why'd you do it, Mr. Johnson? Johansson with a yo. Johansson. Uh, Sorry. I don't know why. I was in here two nights ago when he came. Sit on that exact same bar stool. Yeah, I remember I, I spoke to you. I didn't tell my wife. I lost a whole week's salary. I'm sorry. It's even worse. I'm not supposed to be drinking. My wife makes up on the wagon. That does complicate things a little, Mr. Hansen. And when he came in here again tonight, I, I just figured nobody in the world especially my wife, but nobody would believe it had happened to me twice in three nights. I saw the door. I said, I can do it. I can make it. I gotta make it. I didn't. Is this gonna be in the papers? Afraid so. Tommy, I want you to do yourself a favor, and me. First thing in the morning, call that number. Lieutenant Al Landers. And you beef. Man, beef good and loud. Then tell him about your baseball. Yes, sir. If you don't get immediate action, you're going straight to the chief. Well, what good will this do? A lot. I tell you, Tommy, we're going to bust this motorcycle now. We've got a lead, and it's a good one. All it takes is money and hours, and Landers can supply that. Bert? Yeah. We'll be right there. Uh, the other officers will take over now. But you make that call, okay? Yeah, thanks, Bert. O.D.? Something up Rod Richards out of him to kill an elephant. According to the book, he's dead already. It's cases like this that shake my faith in medical science. Where'd they find him? A couple of kids found him dumped at a construction site. How long will it be before we can talk to him? A couple of days. That's just a guess. Still a chance you might have to arrange a seance.
Tonight, worrying about this. Easy ride or not. You want to know? This guy's a, a wild man. There he is, Lieutenant. All right, then let's get out there. Let's get him, huh? You two are going to get him. I'm going to give you three units yourself plus any two other teams you want to choose. And what we'll round the clock surveillance on him because, you know, this guy isn't just an armed robber anymore. Hell, he, he could have killed that civilian in Delaney's last night. He sure could have, Lieutenant. All right. I say, let's get out there, get him, bust him. And if he so much as makes a move for that nine millimeter automatic of his, I want you to, and you haven't heard me say this before, I want you to waste him. Waste him, sir? That's what I said, waste him. Rem takes her ever stock with him. We have to deprive him of his motorcycle. We just got it. Yeah, like that. Uh, Jimmy opened the window inside of the garage, sneak in, remove some valuable parts from his beautifully hopped up motorcycle. Good, that's braking and entering plus a 459. So? I approve. You sure you know how to do that stuff? I fix my kids' bikes twice a week. If anything hinky happens, get on the CC fast, right? By the way, what's the potato for? I'll tell you if it works. Take care of the cycle until he can get some spare parts. Nice work, partner. And I also made a small adjustment on his engine power. On the bike? On the Corvette. You see, there are some interesting places you can stick a potato in a car. And he won't notice it until he tries to go past 50. So if he uses the Corvette for a job, he'll be at half power and won't be able to run away from us. 3W56, is it 3W58? Go ahead, 3W58. Ready to relieve, you can start rolling. We're right up the street. Roger, 3W58. Let me add, the bike has been decommissioned. If anything rolls out of that garage, it'll be the Corvette. Yeah, this is 3W58 again. Great. How'd that happen? Genius. Sheer genius. 3W56. Roger and out. Seven. This is 3W56. Would I keep a secret from you? Just hang in there, man. We'll keep you informed. Hey, old buddy. Take a look at that. fault he's unhappy. 3W56 to 3W5758. Suspect just left house, failed to start back. Hang in there, we'll uh, keep you alerted. This is 3W56, suspect moving out in the Corvette. We'll take the point. Roger, 3W56. Gotcha, 3W56. Hang close.
suspect moving west, down 6. I want you guys on parallel streets, ready to move in. Josephina's corner 7th and Highland. That's a good saloon. Lots of class. You sure that's Josephina's? Right. Read that 57, 58. I'll cut up Highland to the parking lot. That's a Roger. Suspect passing Josephina's now. He's turning right on Palm. There's an alley on Palm that leads to the parking lot. I'm on Highland, turning on the fifth street. Gonna hold up in the parking lot and wait for him. Let's take them. Three hundred fifty-seven and fifty-eight. Suspect turning right on Carson. Let's box them in. It was a good shooting, fella. Damn right you're shooting. It was a lucky shot. 
Shot right through his sneeze is what he did. Put me in a room in a garage, and then the cat just wallops me a couple of times. Then had nerve enough to say, say, look, Jack, we're going to take it easy on you if you clear town. Till their friend uh, Harry gets cool with the law. Now, you know I wasn't going to go for that. And I told him that you can go just straight to, you know. And that's when the cat really lets me have it. And then, zoom, I hit the floor. And then, then he straddles me, and he, and, he, and he pins my arms down with his knees, you know? Yeah. And then this big, ugly galoot aims that pistol right at my head, and that's when that other creepo gave him the, the pills. Pills? Yeah, 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 a big plastic bag full of all colors and shapes and everything. Now, now what? Mm, go on. So anyway, the dude with the gun takes the pills, crams them in my mouth, and says, I will blow a hole right through your head if you don't swallow them. <laughs> you know I didn't want to go for that. So they kept doing this thing over and over and over again. Man, I'm telling you, I must have swallowed more pills than they got in this whole damn hospital before I passed out, that is. Can you tell us where the house is? Tell you, man. I will show you where the house is. Oh, hold it. Hold it, man. Say, look, I want to be there when you put the cops on the turkeys, cousin. I promise. I'll tell you the whole thing. Oh, no. That ain't going to be the same. That won't be the same. You two take the garage room. We'll hit the back of the house. Barlow and Matson, take the front. Maybe I was right. These dudes are the pill bugs. Company. Gotcha. Doing, doing. Got to do it. <laughs> Oh, y'all, no. Not quite. What about the modern cleaners, John? Billy Gibson. You knew about that? It's getting late. We're getting tired. Got a lot of things to do tonight. Now, if you've changed your mind back to not cooperating, you're in big trouble, Billy. All right. Okay. I knew about it. Afterwards. But you were there. Why did they take it down? Because Harry got sore. Sower. Every time I took some clothes in to be clean, that up and at him little cat make a pass at me. Do he give some? Yeah. Asking me if I'd like to work for him. Hell, I knew what he meant, so I told Harry about him. The way he was always coming on and flipping out. Harry said he was going down and kicked the little creep silly, but then he changed his mind and decided he was going to get even by George, him and Mace Robin, old Mr. Dewey Gibson. Oh, That's 
Lou, if I ever told you that now I've heard everything, I take it all back. This 211 was for love. Mm -hmm. See, you cats didn't think I was going to show up, did you, huh? Oh, no, man, we knew you would. It's just good to see you, my friend. Let me tell you something. If that Evans dude got any more friends he want to send my way, I got something for him. Champa got my heat, got my stuff. Hey, man. This is a court of law. I don't care what it is, man. Is, uh, this is my piece, and it's registered. No, Dewey, don't, man. Don't. Dewey, I'm telling you, you cannot take that in there. Well, I ain't going in there without it. Dewey, it's against the law. You go in there with that piece, and something can happen. See, I don't care, champ. This is good time. Dewey Gibson, and I can take the rap. And from now on, wherever I go, I'm going fully dressed, meaning that my stuff going with me. You hip to what I'm saying? Now, in case you cats just don't want me to testify, toodles. Okay, Dewey. I guess after what's happened to you, I can't say that I blame you. Now, we can't give you permission. So be careful. Promise. All right. Dude. Mm -hmm. State of California versus Evans, Macefield, and Jenkins. Mr. Bloom, will you call your first witness, please? Will Mr. Dewey Gibson please step forward? That's me, Dewey. Somebody spots that piece on Dewey, then what? I don't know, Lou. That's why we're sitting here, close to the door. You solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give in the cause now pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. 11 Mary 6, call a station. 13 Zebra 5, John Frank William 899. Next on NBN, stay with us for Wheel of Fortune. Then on the Midday Show, Ray Martin's guests include Leo Sayer, Kamal, and the Prime Minister Bob Hawke. That's on the Midday Show today, here on NBN. Wonder.